words of a kalpur god and how this divine wisdom helps cross over this impressed minds endless chatter thoughts emotions intellect which has submerged my true identity completely from me like i have amnesia and thus my true pure qualities are submissive and so knowing and admitting that i have deep issues to deal with for example that even while wanting to be calm and peaceful 
I get disturbed, irritated, angry. While realizing I don't need many things, I have ongoing desires. While wanting to be happy, I feel sad. While wanting to love and be loved, I often feel a hollowness, a deep loneliness, which makes me outwardly seek in different relationships. And yet, somehow, I never feel completely satisfied or at peace or fully loved. To realize and accept the truth of my current state of mind, feelings, emotions, thoughts, is very important to my inner progress. For how can I heal? Or why would I even go to the doctor if I'm feeling completely well? To accept that I fluctuate in my mind, my thoughts, my emotion and I waver and thus my words and actions come across wrongly from the being that I would like to be. Mantra Man Mool Mutarna The Mool Mantra's beautiful words its pure and deep meaning can help tune this mind to contemplate and meditate. Focus on the divine energy, life force within this body, which is my real identity, our real identity, each one of us. And thus begins an inner journey, working inside out. Let us endeavor to connect with the depths of such Turikibani to allow its wisdom to give us an experience beyond what is visible in order to live life within and without ever more beautifully and gracefully. Ik Guru Nanak Dev Ji begins with the very root and beginning of it all. Ik, a compact word that encompasses the one force, divine energy that is always prevalent and runs through the entire universe, this beautiful universe that is visible to all, undeniably. The one, Ek, the only one, that we say, Tuhi, Tuhi, about only you, Akalpurak, God, Vahigru, Paramatma, Parampita, Allah, Ishwar, Jehovah, all the different names we have given to that ship seed, the very essence of it all. It is the one, Ek, the one universal force behind it all, our eternal father, creator, sustainer, liberator of every being, irrelevant of caste, creed, race, religion, gender, age, size, nationality. O, oh, the creation, manifestation of vibrations and sounds and matter, forms and movements all around, all set for us to play our parts on this world stage. Um, the ever-changing nature of energy that appears to destroy but in reality, just 
transforms. And car, the everlasting continuity of this entire process happening by itself. And we, in each form and sound and moment, merged in every moment as part of that massive creation. And yet internally, each one of us, I am a divine life force, energy, an image of the one. With external sound and form and movement merged in every moment in harmony, in union to the eternal script in every manner, continually playing together. A current runs through the entire creation and like actors playing on the stage in different movies, dramas, scenes and episodes, we change roles and characters. And just like children playing with paints, ik on gar never creates the same picture twice. Sat Nam. If I can accept what ekonkar means, then I must also remember to accept the presence of that divinity within myself. For each one of us is a part of that eternal Sat, true foreverness. I am, perhaps I do not always see or feel that presence or connection, but Gurnana tells us it is that divine presence within us that is our real, true, forever identity. The life force, energy, soul, or atma as we can call it, within this outer visible covering that is a male or female body, which we relate to as myself, but in reality, it isn't me. The real me, the real I, the inner I, E-Y-E, the inner vision. Our true name, Satnam, our real existence is the light, life force, core, the divine energy which keeps this body alive. This body that collapses and becomes a corpse or even dead matter once I leave it. What I see in the mirror as myself today is a 48 year old woman, a Sikh, who grew up in Bangkok, a mother, a teacher, daughter one who loves to read, likes chocolates, etc. is a very temporary thing, labels, that will change as I age or vanish as soon as my breath leaves my body. But beyond these definitions, these stored memories, opinions, emotions, knowledge and tastes of a lifetime, there is a presence, a life, a spirit that will keep going. This presence is part and parcel of the play of Ik Om God. And that is my true forever identity. This line may be difficult because it is difficult to believe that the divine is the doer. Our mind tells us that I'm the doer. I'm the one who's acting. I am the creator. I am the manipulator. 
I am the one who can move things and create my life as I want to. I am. The moment the mind hears that it is not the doer, it protests, creates doubts, arguments, becomes defensive and storms around. The mind can become competitive with divinity and try to prove that it is the doer, it is the protector, and nothing is greater than itself. This is merely the impressed part of the mind. Manmat. We call this mind ego. How may? And there's a purpose for it. Because the intricate truth is that the divine life force dwells in you as well as in everything. So you are part of that creative power and part of that protective energy. You are not the entirety of it, but in your spirit, you are part of it. The misunderstanding comes because of this mind, Manman. The purpose of the mind is to uncover its true essence and recognize its identity as the soul, child and part of the Supreme, the One and only ek. It is there to apply its intelligence, buddhi, to carry out the commands of the spirit. When a human being flows with the experience of her own spirit and soul, the very true identity of every human, then uses the mind serving that, then it is easy to understand where the I is not experienced as the doer at all, where everything is arranged and taken care of by the hand of the one. But when the mind does not know how to listen or surrender to our own inner divinity, then it follows its own impulses and desires. It comes under the control of the five senses, karamindris, which lead it to the five vices of lust, anger, greed, attachments, ego, and other offshoots of these like jealousy, irritation, fear, laziness, name, fame, etc. Because in that experience, nothing ever quite turns out the way it wants. That builds frustration, anger and fear. The balance of our lives as human beings rests on this point. If the mind can somehow be trained and empowered to serve the moon, the core, it can surrender its finite understanding of life and consciously enjoy the experience of the oneness of us all. Nirpa, Nirvair. When I have seen these truths of Ekongar, Satnam, Kartapurak, then how can I ever feel afraid again? How can I ever be angry? Fear and anger come from ego, from my limited perception, needing to protect my own false security and identity, separate from the oneness, unity from him. But if the divine has blessed me to understand this force that runs within me and all, that runs through this body, keeping it upright and alive for now, because the length of time of my presence in this body is also unguaranteed. That there is a higher hand in everything beyond me and everyone I see and know. That there is the invisible one overseeing it all. Our own entire universe, galaxy, nature, elements, matter, energies, 
then I recognize and realize that whatever I experience is in a way the divine will. Jiske sir upar tu swami so dukh kaisa paave so I can question then that why would I react to what I see or think with fear or anger or sadness if it is all part of that divine will. The bigger order hukam prasai jalna now that we should set boundaries or stand up for injustice we should but that is our roles to play just a role play just as guru gobind singh was a master of seeing the divine on the battlefield of praying to every aspect of the creator while wielding his sword a courageous non-egoistic role play serving humanity to see and fight the divine in the enemy to know the duty and yet to keep the compassion in one's heart this is the way of the sick a learner a true learner it's more about the way in which one sees life anger and fear cannot coexist with love which is one of the spirit's true qualities fear or an anger there exists only in the ego false identity body consciousness the impressions of who i think i am focused on the outward only what's visible which is manmat so know that where fear and anger are the guru's words are not where the guru's words are fear and anger have no ground in which to grow this to my own mind is the reason why the sikhs in history could face such terrible tortures and horrors and still shine because they had cracked and experienced the secret of the moon mantra and the experience of divinity within themselves and within the entire creation which was so powerful and so great that even in the worst circumstances they could see and connect to the divine within themselves and see that life force jyot in the other person too and so they could go through the challenge with love playing their roles as required instead of with fear and vengeance and enmity a kal murat moving beyond fear and anger a perception an awareness opens up within ourselves and suddenly we can touch that deathless spirit inside a kal murat our projection as a human begins to channel that light life force that light jyot that is the true me satna always prevalent but until now totally forgotten tapping into this we become the image of the undying in identity murat and quality akal while on the earth living an experience in the body and yet beyond it beyond time beyond death akal time is relevant only to the body's process of aging and death it is a mental trick or a philosophy an argument or a philosophy or a policy it is something that begins to blossom when we move beyond fear and anger and enmity because when we begin to live beyond fear and anger 
and feel our power from the deepest, most true, most genuine love inside of ourselves, then the fact that we are deathless begins to make itself known to our conscious mind as an everlasting spirit and physically as unaffected by negative emotions. In that awareness, we can represent deathless divinity in our everyday life through our words, through our actions, through our dress, through our every interaction. We present in form the truth and reality of the deathless divine. In time, this can then give rise to living the Rehat. For in the Rehat, Guru Gobind Singh Ji gave the Sikhs a discipline and a structure to be a Kalmurat, to be the image of the undying, the deathless in form, as a constant reminder to being a true Khalsa, pure one within. A Juni. A Juni. Beyond birth. In itself, it is. Always there. Never been born. Deathless in form. Never been born. Though the capacity of the mind has no logic or logical mapping. Our spirit has always existed and will continue to exist, always. No death, no birth, no beginning, no end. Just one big play, one continuous learning, shifting from form to form through time and space. A journey beyond are such from the very beginning, I exist, we exist. Jugad such, before that too eternally. Happy such, in every now. And as Nanak says, Hosi be such, and in every future too. Feeling the reality of the deathless, everlasting, eternal spirit inside and understanding that there never was a beginning to us anyway. The mind can penetrate through the fog of time and surrender its finite ego to something far bigger. Se bang. Se bang flowing through the cycles of birth and death, of the costume body, matter, it moves by its own self, hidden inside, an invisible illuminating light, life force, light and might, purity and projection. Life needs definition to fulfill itself. And so for most of us, the mind gives us our definition. We are lawyers, engineers, lovers, ministers, writers, rebels. Words, pictures, images that direct how we use our breath, our voice, our actions, our creativity to form our own current lives. Guru Nanak gives us a different definition. Seba, ever lit light, truth, life force. It's a definition that applies to the soul, to the spirit. And in that definition, our own inner purity flows through time and space, calling one experience after another forward until we can consciously merge back in union, connection with Ekumkar, with the source, with the one, completion experientially, become completely full and complete again 
with all of the divine original soul qualities. That is, free of all vices, free of everything, complete within myself. No calm, no desires, needs, lust, so-called physical and emotional cravings. No growth, no anger, irritations, disturbances, the need to correct anyone. No lobe, no greed, one's external needs for wealth, fame, name, luxuries, etc. No more, no attachments to things, situations, people, especially in loving relationships. No asking, no expectations, no conditions for anything. Only the free giving of oneself selflessly. No ego. Ankar, this is the root, my very awakening to myself and the false falsehood around. Give Kore the Tengpa, the breaking of the biggest false illusion that I am this body with all the labels and relationships associated with that body. The feeling and experience of my core, my true identity. I am but a point of energy, light, full of might. Man, to chod sarup hai, apna mool pachar. The child of the Almighty One, Master Almighty, authority too. And so, in everyone around me, whether they know it or not, realize it or not, to have compassion for those still disillusioned and to be awed and grateful for having woken up and stepping onto the path of a Sachyara, a true being. The very purpose of life as defined by the first question in Sego Granth Sahib Ji, give Sachyara Oye. This definition applies once we understand that we are deathless in form, just merely sparkling energy, life force inside. In that vastness of identity, Seba becomes a guideline for how to approach life, how to engage the very tiny bit of time that we have on the earth, in this body, in this experience. Rather than looking to create a finite identity and security for ourselves, Seba asks us to see our life in the context of a much larger journey and to keep flowing forward to complete who we are so that the mind can consciously merge into the limitless of self and allow that inner divinity to complete the journey. Sebang is envisioning my true identity as the light inside. Man. To Jyot Sarup hai, apna mool bachar. See myself as Jyot, light, sepa, soul, spirit. All the words of the Mool Mantar describe me. And only in this consciousness can I begin reading Sri Gokran Sahib Ji in another dimension, a depth for the inner, which will then redirect this outer shell change this worldly impressed upon mind manmat to become gurmat gur barsad when i seek yearn to be a sachyar then this understanding shall come as a sweet blessing as a gift through the guru's grace through the divine will it is per our own yearn and thirst for truth, as per our effort to uncover and be beautiful deep inside, not to show anyone or prove anything, as per our karmic accounts. Changiyaya, buriyaya, vache, taram hadur, karmi apu apani, ke nere ke dur. As per our thirst for love, jin prem ki ho, then he prabhapayo. Prem kiyo, love is given, not asked for or taken. We 
tend to seek it. Truth is, we need to give it only. Grace comes with true thirst. Man chau berag. We do need a teacher. We need a guide. Only a fool believes that his or her mind can figure everything out on its own. We needed someone to teach us how to tie our shoes, how to dress ourselves, then older, how to count, how to write letters. And yet this most sublime and important lesson of all, the lesson of what a human being is, of the purpose of the human life, we can sometimes so arrogantly assume that we need no teacher for that at all. It is the proof of God in the world that questions the existence of the divine that so many teachers have come to give us a path home. For the sick, that teacher is the Shabbat, the divinely given word of the Guru that guides our inner and outer growth. And by meditating on that sound current of the Shabbat with the clarity of its definition, trains the mind into the reality of all that the Mool Mantra has described. And we seek that blessing, that gift that comes through the Guru, through Vaheguru. For just as we could never teach ourselves how to tie our own shoes, so too the journey to merge into divinity needs an example to follow, needs guidelines, principles, and a voice that can remind us of the truth when we wander off the path. To continually keep myself connected with the one always, such that I experience to he, to he, to he, or koine in my inner vision, in my thought, in my heart, in my feelings, in my life and everyone else is but a reflection of that. Children of that one, from whom we all need to connect, that we have lost by getting carried away in the external, from the beginning of birth, in a body, in this lifetime, and even in many previous lifetimes. To connect back to my core, my moon and regaining my true essence in image and qualities as the spirit child of the one and only Ek Om God and thus to become pure divine Vaheguruji Ka Khalsa and to be part of being victorious his and mine and everyone's Vaheguruji Ki Fateh Oh
deep inner connection by tuning in to help have an experiential remembrance. Simran, I take a moment to remain in the awe of Weiger, a Kalpurak, the universe, his entire creation, everything that I see, everything that I hear, and to realize that I am part of it all. Me, the inside. force inside as the energy, the being that needs empowerment. Man tujot sarup hai. Apna mool pachan. So I see myself in my true And as 
as this happens, my karmic accounts get deleted. My negative qualities of gun get deleted. Gunt lie of gun submate. As I hug Vahiguru, light to light, soul to supreme soul, I am deleting my negative qualities and attaining his beauty. vision and keep that connection even with my eyes open even as I walk and talk and play I empower myself and I change my destiny and I change my world and I become a better human being and thus I can do Saz Saz Simro Kopit and I can talk to my father, Baba, Babaji, my Vahiguru, and tell him and give him all my negative qualities. Every time I feel sad or low or lonely, I just connect and come back and give him everything and be free and live with his powers. Amritvela Deep Connection Man Tu Jyot Sarup Hai Apna Mool Pachan Main Kona Who Am I Tune In a sparkling, twinkling star, life force, energy, residing in this body, in the center of my forehead, giving life and light to this body. As long as I am in this body, this body can move. My heart beats, my blood flows, intestines work, my eyes can see, my ears can hear, my mouth can speak, my nose can smell, all the five senses are working. I, energy, life force. Mul Saru Atma Jyot My true identity I am a twinkling sparkling soul I use my inner ability to see inside I see myself in my true form. I remain in that vision of seeing a sparkling sun inside, knowing that the moment I leave this body, this body collapses. It is because of me that this body is alive and moving. At this early hour in the morning, I am sitting in consciousness of myself. I take this moment to delete my external form, to erase this body, and I'm left with my essence, twinkling 
sparkling life force energy pure thought I use my thought power and my winner visualization power and my feelings as I stay connected to my true identity man to jyot sarup hai if i am a sparkling star then everyone around me is also a sparkling star so who's the greater of us all the everlasting ever supreme also life force energy beyond this world the one in charge of it all ek omkar supreme soul who does not come into the cycle of time into any mother's womb to take birth i come and because i come into the womb of a mother i start my karmic accounts and having come into many wombs and left many bodies and lived many lifetimes i have lost my power i have even forgotten who i am i have developed amnesia sitting in this consciousness of my true identity i realize that there is the one and only supreme soul the external source that i connect to using my mind and my thought so i take this moment to fly up out of this body beyond this room beyond this country beyond this continent beyond the earth beyond the galaxies beyond any visibility or realm of matter reachable only by thought power i reach a realm of golden red light beautiful peaceful calm mood button my true home land of silence where the supreme soul resides awaiting me to visit him awaiting everyone and we can visit any time and this early hour is the sacred hour where we can easily reach as there are no distractions i sparkling star reach and see another sparkling star vahigu god supreme soul allah ishwar shiv whatever name we give it is him beyond body i fly close to him and give him a hug a union go bin milan i have come to see you to have a union with you bhai prapat manuk tehariya go bin milan ki e teri bariya as i hug him i feel 
feel his energy, his love, automatically transfer into me. As energy flows from the higher source to the lower source, I fill up and fill up and fill up. With his divine peace, love, joy, contentment, purity. Kantalai of Gun Submete. In this hug, whether I realize it or not, my negative qualities are getting deleted and I'm becoming purer and purer and purer. And at the same time, I'm filling up with this beautiful quality. Jyoti Jyot Milan Jyoti Jyot Rali Sampuran Thiara As I become complete All the powers of the soul that I have lost having taken many births and having lots of karmic accounts in this lifetime and many lifetimes I begin deleting by meeting Vahigur a Kalpurak in my mind Adam Ritvela and I understand and enjoy as I recognize my father my eternal father of all lifetimes every birth I have a physical father and mother but he is the eternal father mother beloved forever and ever satana the one and only tu mera pita tu mera mata tu mera bandha tu mera brata you are my everything Tuhi, 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 you, only you. For it is only you that can delete my karmic accounts, delete my negative qualities, transform me and fill me up to be like yourself. Gurbani baniye, so I can become just like you. Saman. I remain embracing you and allowing you to flow into me as this battery of life recharges automatically and as I stay connected with you I'd like to do Sarbatapala. So I allow your love and light through my thought consciousness to flow as rays of light onto the entire earth below, hugging and touching every twinkling star on earth, everywhere. Sarbatapala. And I take a moment to focus on remaining connected with Vai Guru in the land of golden red light, star to star, holding the vision and allowing his rays of love and light to touch every soul. I redirect his energy towards those souls with whom I have karmic accounts in this lifetime so that we may live joyfully and lovingly together peaceful happy the ones I love the ones with whom I have
have lots of challenges so that we cut karmic accounts and become pure. I remain united with Vahiku, Gobind Milan, as I allow this seva to take place, Mansa Seva, at this pure time of Amrit. Holding this vision and filling up, I wow and feel his love. Wow, Mary Guru. Wow, wow, Mary Baba. Wow, wow, Mary Vai Guru. Wow, Dui, Dui, Dui. And to feel that love. Sajan Nara, Mira Sajan Nara, Nikita Cloyer.